G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, so Sunday here in Australia and we've had a little bit of a pullback. So again, we're back down into that $57,000 range, but it really does seem like that $57,000 range is support at the moment, which is really good. Ethereum down a little bit as well. It was around about 2,000 sort of 100 down around the 2,000 sort of $50 mark. But again, it seems to be that 2,000 is now support. So not so bad, but we're still sort of waiting to see what happens. Again, Sunday over in the States is tomorrow. Are we going to see a bigger decline or is this the sell-off in the last 24 hours? Has it come, you know, on the Saturday as opposed to the Sunday, which it's been happening over the last few months? And look, prior to that, it was sort of happening Thursday night, Friday night. So it's not like it's a, an exact science that it's always going to happen on the Sunday or it's always going to happen on the Saturday. It can change and vary. And in all fairness, I don't know exactly, you know, what the mechanics behind it is, what makes it change on any one day, but I guess it's just the market. And a lot of people, you know, they're buying and trading based on just pure sentiment. And sentiment's good, don't get me wrong, I use sentiment all the time. But I don't use that as my only indication. Like I'm not going to buy at 57,000, or sorry, I'm not going to buy at 60,000. And if it goes down to 57,000, panic sell, which I think is what uh, is happening. A, a lot of this uh, is, yeah, a lot of that. People, you know, trading and buying uh, and investing on sentiment and then getting shaken out a little bit. Strong hands are just simply buying and holding. There's been no massive sell offs yet. All right, $1.928 trillion. So again, we're so close to that trillion dollar mark, $2 trillion mark, sorry, and look, down 1.8%. But it's the weekend, so it's to be expected. BTC dominance, 55%, nearly 56%. ETH dominance, 12%, so growing, uh, and gas prices, 129 Now, it looks like a fairly sort of green day there, a little bit of red in there, not too much. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Let's have a look. All right, so Solana's done well. Helium, Tron, look, out of nowhere. Dent, Celsius, Thor, Polkadot's been doing quite good, particularly over the last seven days. BitTorrent, Pundi, Zcash. So look, we definitely got some good movers in there. Now again, 15 plus percent in 24 hours is what I call really good. Any gain is a gain, so you're not going to knock it back. But what about losers? Has there been anything that's really corrected hard? And most likely things that have already pumped really hard. So Mass Network down, Sciacoin, EOS, IOST, 0x, excuse me, Bitcoin SV, Ontology, Sushi X, Waves, Harmony. But again, there's really only one loss there that I guess, again, on my scale would really hurt, and that's uh, Mask Network, but they're still up 64% for the week, so that's not too bad. 20% loss, that only really hurts if you bought uh, at the very high. But if you bought over seven days ago, then you're still doing all right. So gains, okay. Losses, not too bad. It's, you know, kind of even really. There were no outstanding gains there. Excuse me. Oh, it's a bit early. And look, no major losses either. And at least in the top 100, outside of the top 100, could be completely different. Now let's go and have a look. Bitcoin, still just kind of teetering. Uh, around that $60,000 level. We can't quite break it, so we've got to 59700 and then we just, you know, have a sell-off straight away. Again, I think that is miners. They're happy to sell at 60000 There's still, I guess, you know, some whales and some people out there. Excuse me, I just cannot stop yawning at the moment. It's not even that early, but I suppose 9.24 in the morning, that is a little bit early uh, for me on a weekend. All right, so yeah, people are happy to sell at 60000 but in saying that, people are happy to buy at 57000 because you can see we've been getting down to 57000 for a while, was resistance, now seems to be support at the moment. So again, resistance there, it's resistance through here a few times, resistance, resistance, a little bit of support there, resistance, resistance, and now it's looking like support, but... Gee, they're really indecisive candles there, so we just need to be careful. There could be a bigger sell-off tomorrow, and again, maybe we come back down and you know retest some levels down in here. So what would that be? 55,000, 54,000. I think the $54,000 level, there is a fair bit of support there, so I couldn't imagine we're going lower than that. 
but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. All right, moving on. So the SEC agrees to redact two documents in the Ripple lawsuit, but not the Ripple CEO's financial info. So when you go through here, there's a couple of emails that they have asked to be redacted and they've agreed to it, but there's a couple of other emails that they haven't want to redact either. So <laughs> this court case just continues to go on and get more interesting. <laughs> and I mean, like no one knows what's in these emails, except for obviously the SEC and Ripple. But the fact that they want to have them redacted I suppose is a little bit concerning like what's in it you know it could be something that's completely personal and irrelevant uh, at least in some people's eyes to the case so yeah but anyway this continues and I don't see it ending anytime soon but you know who knows maybe all of a sudden they settle you know judges have told them to get together and uh, you know have a chat and you know not so much see if they can amicably settle this but, you know, get down to the nuts and bolts of what people are arguing about and things like that. So it continues. All right. Very interesting here. Now that ETH has hit an all-time high, a whale has transferred 629,000 ETH to the DeFi lending protocol compound. Now, this is shortly after it set its new all-time high. So I guess they're thinking that it's going to get on a bit of a run and start to earn some really good interest. So if you're an ETH... Watch what the whales are doing. Uh, I've got ETH. I'm, I don't have anything in Compound. Uh, I probably should. But there's so many sites out there, it's hard to know which one to, you know, really get onto. I use BlockFi. They do all right for me. Celsius is something that I'm looking at, and I might have to look at Compound as well. All right. So, again, Bitcoin dominance. It is getting to an all-time low. So, down in the 50s. It hasn't been there for a really long time. But other coins are starting to excuse me pump because of that so we can see polka dots up 22 uh, percent over the last seven days it's been doing quite well now bitcoin's inability to overcome 60,000 has caused a massive chunk of its dominance in the past few weeks as the metric is down to a seven month low beneath 60 percent so again down to 55 percent and possibly going lower and look if we get below 50 percent it is altcoin season. They are going to explode. In contrast, some altcoins have charted impressive gains, including new all-time high records for Ethereum and Polkadot. Yep, 2000 So we can go back to there. We can have a look. It was $2,000 for Ethereum. So there, $2,047. Uh, and Polkadot, where are we? There we are. So $42 for Polkadot. Very, very nice. Not bad at all. So doing well. All right, banks seems like the less volatile Bitcoin is, the more inclined they are to get in. So Bitcoin's volatility has declined in recent months, which could signify the entrance. Oh, excuse me, I've got to stop that. Of large banks, uh, asserted analysts from J.P. Morgan and Chase and Co. Large banking organisations and institutional investors could reinvigorate their demand for Bitcoin soon, commented researchers from J.P. Morgan, Chase & Co. They reason that Bitcoin's volatility levels have been decreasing in recent weeks, which could be the primary benefit for institutions. I would have to agree with that. I don't think you know, big institutions are going to be too keen on getting into you know, something that's just so volatile and that's what they're waiting for, regulation and for the volatility to go down. But what they don't understand is if there is no volatility, then the upside uh, is less, but the downside is less as well. But I guess that's what they're into. They're used to their old ways. So, yeah, double-edged sword. Uh, less volatility uh, is good for if you can't handle the highs and lows. Less volatility uh, is no good if you really want those exponential gains, but that's just the way it goes. All right, so on-chain data suggests that East's latest price surge to hit uh, surge to a new record at 2,150 could be attributed to rising network activity and declining exchange deposits. Well, of course, what else could it be? I don't know if it could be anything else. On-chain data reveals the rapidly growing adoption of the network behind the second largest cryptocurrency with new records for active addresses. Yeah, that doesn't uh, surprise me either. You know, ETH, there's a lot of talk out there. There's a lot of, you know, really good stuff happening. They have a large community, a lot of people building on it. 
And again, I speak about this all the time. It's just the gas fees, you know, the scaling. I really think once they get on top of that, there's nothing that's going to hold them back. But the longer that takes, the more things like Polkadot are going to do well, Cardano are going to do well, you know, all those other chains. Even EOS uh, seems to be having some pumps on occasions, although I think EOS is... Uh, I won't say a dead chain, but I just think it's going to be really hard for it to survive without Dan Larimer. Uh, but we'll wait and see. Maybe they've got more. You know, Adam's sort of up and coming. There's lots of projects out there. BNB's growing. Tron's still there. So Ethereum is in trouble. I'm not in trouble, but they will continue to lose market share. Even though ETH's doing well, a lot of coins are doing well right now. That's because Bitcoin dominance is dropping. Uh, but the ETH gas fees, I mean, I, you know, I, I sound like a broken record, I know, and I hate going over it, but it's just a killer. I can't use Ethereum at the moment. Other than I can buy Ethereum and hold it, no smart contract stuff uh, at the moment. It's just the gas fees are way too much. All right, we spoke about this a while ago. So pension funds and insurance firms are alive to Bitcoin investment proposal. I mean, they've been doing it for a while now. So we heard about Kiwi Saver, so they're getting into it. We heard about Mass Mutual, they're getting into it, and they're just the first. There's going to be more to follow. And particularly if Bitcoin's you know price kind of stabilizes a bit, at least to the on the downside anyway. They don't have too much problems with the upside, but it's the downside. You know, if it's gonna pump twenty five percent, you know, in a couple of days and then dump by, you know, twenty percent uh in the days after, they're gonna be really yeah, the big companies, they're just going to take a while to get on board with that kind of stuff. And really, they're just going to wait. You know, there will be early adopters. But anyway, moving on. Bitcoin's appeal among institutional investors is spreading towards insurance firms and life and uh, annuities companies. So, you know, what we call superannuation over here and 401ks and things like that over in the States. Life and, annu and annuity companies are increasingly uh, dedicating part of their asset base to Bitcoin. And we're waiting to see, you know, sovereign funds get into it. So countries, governments and things like that, that will come. It's just a matter of time. Whether it's going to happen in the very near future or not, you know, it, it's hard to know. But this is what's happening. So over the last year, publicly listed firms have begun to add Bitcoin to their balance sheet, citing fiat currency debasement concerns. Yep, that's part of it. And also because Bitcoin is stabilizing a little bit. With pension funds and insurance joining other public corporations in investing in Bitcoin, attention is now shifting to whether governments themselves will begin to invest in BTC via their sovereign wealth funds. So, I mean, we already saw, I think it was Singapore we spoke about the other day. They have started to do that. And again, you know, the New Zealand uh, Kiwi super saver getting into Bitcoin. And it is just the start. This is all you know just part of the growth and it is that trickle 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 before it does become a flood and we haven't hit the flood part part yet we're not even close to that it's still trickle i mean we looked at an article a while ago 95 percent of institutional investors aren't in yet they aren't in so all the big money that's getting in now they're what we is really you know considered as the smart money and they generally get in long before everybody else is. So if you were here before them, then you can be considered the super smart money. So the big money is still yet to come. And look, we may or may not see it this cycle. This may just be that early part. And, you know, the institutions that are in now, they're going to pump it up fairly high. And then they're going to try and dump it really, really hard to shake everybody out. Uh, and so they can reaccumulate and get even more. So for me... You know, I may sell some Bitcoin uh, when I believe the peak is in, but I'm not going to sell too much. I really will be holding on to a majority of my Bitcoin. But all my altcoins, I do plan on selling, you know, probably 50%, if not even more of those. But again, you know, that may change. We'll just have to wait and see. It, you know, it de depends what's going on in the market. I mean, if they just keep printing money, then I don't plan on selling any of my cryptocurrencies anytime soon. It won't be until they stop printing money that then I will start to think, all right, is now the time to sell? Or again, maybe that just ramps it up even more. Who knows? Particularly if inflation really starts to set in, then I think you will see people move into, um, yeah, Bitcoin and Ethereum and things like that. But 
have to say this every video, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. All right, last but not least, it seems like Bitcoin at the moment has decoupled from stocks. But look, it, it, it goes through periods where it's you know, less coupled and through periods where it's more coupled. But at the moment, Bitcoin decouples from stocks and gold, but it remains inversely correlated to the US dollar. So as long as the US dollar continues to kind of get printed into oblivion and go down, then Bitcoin's going to go up. All right, institutions haven't just pushed Bitcoin prices toward the moon during the past two quarters. They seem to have helped the cryptocurrency to couple from traditional markets like the Standard & Poor or the S&P 500, uh, which is the index of US stocks. The 90-day correlation between Bitcoin and both gold and stocks reverted to a more typical range of 0 uh, to 0 0.02 during Q1 most likely as a result of the growing clarity around its value position relative to more traditional assets. So decoupled from those a little, but really it's just gone back to where it's been previously. So it hasn't decoupled even more than it's ever been. But the dollar, as long as the dollar is doing poorly, Bitcoin's going to do well. As soon as the dollar corrects and starts to do better, Bitcoin will probably start to lose, at least based on history. That's how it's played out. So let me know your thoughts down below. You know, do you keep an eye on the the correlation between Bitcoin to things like gold and stocks and the dollar? Or are you just an investor and you don't care because you believe it is just the future, plain and simple? I mean, I definitely do keep an eye on this because I have noted that particularly with the dollar, when the dollar starts to do well and everyone's getting into the dollar, Bitcoin will lose or it has lost whether that continues or not in the future we'll have to wait and see but yeah let me know your thoughts down below do you believe in these sort of correlations uh, to Bitcoin or are you just an, uh, an investor no matter what all right well that's it for me at least I've stopped yawning but again this is a bit of an early one for me I've got a lot of stuff I need to get done today so get this early video out all right stay safe be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train at the moment and I'll see you next time.